a quick update on the power issue, but I thought I'd give you a look at, uh, let's see, Kurt on the top. He has no serial number and serial number, uh, what the heck was that? 246 on the bottom. 246 is in pretty nice shape now. Um, I've got a scratchy volume control to fix, but other than that, um, all the bands work and transmits on all bands and the filters actually now sound quite good. And uh, kind of the way you'd expect. The band isn't very active right now, but I wanted to give you the update on the power thing first. So it turns out that this might just be uh, an issue with the fact that serial number 246 has a much older firmware on the controller. I think something like uh, version 1 something, uh, which I hadn't seen except in this radio. So if you look at what we found, it's not horrible. Um, so this is the dial reading when you set the power. So from 0.1 watts up to 6.8 is where I tested. And then I just did a quick test on, uh, who did I do this on? On Kurt <laughs> to see if uh, it would reach the 10 watts because um, serial number 246 was at 10 watts when the dial was set to 6.8. But when you look at what happens with the RF detection circuit, this is 246 and this is Kurt. The readings are almost identical all the way up until you get to 6.8. And here, uh, Kurt was at 7 watts and 246 was at 10 watts. So it's not horrible. And it tracked, I guess, fairly well up here, about a watt less at 5 watts, uh, a watt less at 4.5 watts when the dial said 2.7. So I suppose as long as I know about it, it's not such a big deal. Um, I may actually swap the control board tomorrow and see if it is a firmware problem because that would uh, leave the detector circuit in the radio and swap the firmware along with the control panel. So we'll try that. But anyway, I think uh, serial number 246 is ready for action. I've worked a couple of POTA stations with it and uh, seems to work well. The bands work well. As far as I know, there's nothing inoperable. The only thing that's a little bit weird is 246 apparently was a victim of having its noise blanker removed for sale. So it has uh, a missing attenuator. I'll show you that really quick and then we'll get done here. So when you look at where the noise blanker fits into the radio, got to get a page back in the book here and I'll show you. So the noise blanker fits into the radio here into J12. And when you bypass the noise blanker, you put a wire across to get the signal th through where the noise blanker would have been. But when you do that, you're supposed to have this attenuation network to provide a 5 dB loss. And currently, as it says down here, if the noise blanker is installed, R88 and R R90 must be removed. That's these two. And you put a wire in for R89. And that's the way this radio is. There's a wire here. So I've got about 5 dB too much gain, and you can tell that it's sometimes hard to get the volume and the uh, RF gain down low enough. So I'll put those back as well. Although I did pull the trigger on an eBay noise blanker, so I may just put that in when it arrives. So there's our update on uh, Kurt and 246. So 246, I think, is just about ready for the, for the airwaves. Um, I've been using it, like I say, we'll put the noise blanker in maybe and call that good. So thanks for watching. See ya.